Hi friends, grateful you're here. It's a little weird to have you in my bedroom. This is gonna be a little sancocho video, a little casual jambalaya of things, if you will. It's gonna be some chit-chatting, some summer TBR building, some domestic travel footage, and a teeny little book haul. Should be interesting, so come on in. Come on in, get comfortable. So even though I've been posting like semi-regularly, I haven't been tapped into <laughs> Too been so long so how are y'all doing how's everything going how's your reading going i don't know if it's something in the air but i feel like i fell into the slumpiest slump in may and i kind of feel like it was bound to happen because i have just been accidentally hitting banger after banger with the reads that i've been picking up so like i'm not completely upset i feel like it's just the nature of things but it's been really hard to pick up anything pay attention to anything but yeah it's okay it's all okay one of my beautiful friends got married in may and it was just like the most beautiful I keep telling everyone from like the moment the day started to the moment the day ended It was just a beautiful sense an overwhelming sense of love. I'm gonna actually not tell you I'm gonna show you so footage time It was kind of crazy with the wildfires that were going on in Canada, the impact that it had around different people. In New York, we got schools shut down because the air quality was just so poor. So a lot of like climate anxiety, which is always fun. I'm excited for the summer though. I think the summer will be really fun. I think in terms of having the space to sort of play around in, to read and talk and digest and synthesize. Something that can be so solitary like reading, and having this community and this feels different because i feel like i've been on bookstagram for a bit but this feels totally different so i'm excited to like spend some time together this summer <laughs> but yeah didn't do reading but like saw the little mermaid found a new book club have just been trying to tie up loose ends to finish out the year i work in a school and so this time of year is very hectic but it's okay because then we have two months of lists <laughs> so i'm just very excited i'm gonna stop chit chatting here Oh, I also did want to say there are like 700 of y'all here and that's really crazy. <laughs> that's really crazy. And this feels, like I said, this feels like totally different than Bookstagram. I feel like Bookstagram to a certain extent, there is some distance there. But like, I feel like we, you know, this is, this is a little more intimate. This is a little more personal and it's kind of crazy. And I feel like it's also a bigger time commitment on your part. So I'm just filled with so much gratitude and so much like joy and a little bit of disbelief that there are so many of you who like comment such sweet things and watch on a consistent basis and yeah i just wanted to say thank you so much it means the world to me and i'm excited to continue if you are a new follower because i know i was a silent viewer on booktube for so long i always felt a little weird about leaving comments but like please if you're new you want to leave a 
comment say hi it's just so cool to connect with y'all so yeah i just want to say a little thank you because <laughs> it, it blows my mind but yeah all right i'm gonna stop talking now and get back to the video see ya on the flippity flip we have like T minus nine days until school staff officially is out of school, but it's been a rough year and I feel like we're just trying to get a jump start on what will hopefully be just like a really cool summer. My friend Casey and I decided to pre-summer on Juneteenth weekend. So we will be taking a flight to Miami for a couple of days and the vibes are going to be chill. They're going to be a peak. So I'm excited for you to join us. Yeah. So I'm going to go through my packing list and make sure I have everything ready. We have to be at the airport at 5 a.m for our flight so yeah so i'm gonna do that and i will see you at jfk tomorrow to decide mirror or not mirror obviously not mirror okay we win next round <laughs> the way that also Casey and I screamed just now all right not mirror not mirror win next round oh it's done huh yeah what I'm just learning that I don't understand how mirrors work but we're almost what? done Welcome back. <laughs> Miami is always so good to me. Very chill trip there, a lot of museums, art, relaxation. We had this intention to do like a book crawl in Miami and we had a list of indie bookstores to visit, but two of them were closed. One of them was like permanently closed and then the other was closed on the day that we were gonna do our little bookstore crawl. So we just, we just got to see one, <laughs> but it was worth it because it was beautiful. It's called Books and Books and it was a bit away from where we were staying on Miami Beach, but it was beautiful. It had like two 
buildings <laughs> and a little courtyard in the center. There's this one bookstore in the Dominican Republic and I can't remember what it's called, but it's in La Zona Colonial. And I always brag about this book shop because it's a theater, bookstore and cafe in one. And it has just such a like stay here all day kind of feel. And I love things like that. And I feel like Books and Books had a similar vibe. Gorgeous selection, gorgeous place, really nice bakery, awesome carrot cake. <laughs> so it was really, really nice. I got two books there. The first one that I got, Cockfight by Maria Fernanda Ampuero. Okay, so this was either recommended to me in my comment section on the Weird Latin American Short Stories collection that I did or someone on Bookstagram mentioned it to me. I cannot remember <laughs> where, but someone mentioned this to me and I saw it and it was the only one there. And the blurb on the top is by Yuri Herrera and I was like, yeah, yeah, it's time. <laughs> She's an Ecuadorian writer, so I'm very, very excited. Also blurbed by Mariana Enriquez, so. And then the other book that I acquired at Books and Books was Annie or No. <laughs> I think I was a little bit overwhelmed with the selection that they had. Books and Books has a really fantastic collection and I was like, oh, I want that and I want that and I want that. And I was like, all right, let me just chill and pick up something that, like I know eventually I wanna build my or No collection. So I was like, let me just pick this up. So yeah, this is one that I'll probably read soon as well. So these are my two little books and books acquisitions. I'm gonna stack them here and I thought since we're talking new books that I am likely going to read this summer we can just transition into summer TBR talk. I'm not going to read the synopsis on any of these books. I am just going to tell y'all the little bit that I know about the book and what has sort of inspired me to pick it up and prioritize it for the summers. So it's gonna be rapid fire and hopefully y'all will see some titles that you're interested in and might wanna pick those up too. But let's get to the books that I wanna read this summer and it's already stressing me out because it's so many. I was actually just tracking how many books I've read and it's not an important benchmark or goal or anything but typically I feel like I'm further along by the halfway mark of the year but this first I don't know what's going on with my brain. So this stack is quite ambitious but at least I'll have this here to sort of guide my reading. The books that I would like to potentially get to this summer. Which one do I start with? The first is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I recently spoke about the fact that I had DNF'd the audiobook of this. The beginning of the audiobook was really entertaining, steamy. I was blushing, I was kicking my little feet, I was <laughs> giggling on public transportation and holding in many a scream. And then I think the more it started to focus on why the couple broke up, the more I just got like irritated and had very little patience for the, I don't know, build up around it, but I wasn't sure if it was because I was listening to it on audio. I love Julia Whelan. I love her. I love her. I just remember my experience reading People We Meet on Vacation as being one that was so like immersive and full of fun. And I really enjoyed that experience. And I'm wondering if maybe Emily Henry is just one of those writers that do better on print physically. I think M. Hen and Julia Whelan are a great team, but I just want to see if I can get along. And I really, I do like that she explores friendship in this. And so many of my favorites loved it. So I really want to give this one another shot and I think it's a good summer read so I'll be trying to get to this one this summer. Oh what is it about? We have this couple who has separated. They have a friend group and they all get together and a couple in the friend group is gonna get married and in order to not ruin the wedding, they pretend to still be together and then it's just like all their tension. Eventually learn why it was that they break up. Tension is fun, it just got a little bit annoying for me on audio. So I'm gonna, I'm hoping that physically I'll get on with it a little bit better. Okay, next one, Old Enough by Haley Jacobson. This one was kindly sent to me by who was this sent to me by? Dutton Books. <laughs> and this one is, I've heard bisexual rep and I've heard very Gen Z figuring out stuff around queer identity. And so I thought that would be a lot of fun. I'm hoping to really enjoy this one, so. Oh, and it's blurbed by Jen Winston who wrote Greedy and I really enjoyed Greedy, so yeah. Next up we have The Sacred and Profane Love Machine by Iris Murdoch. I have been searching and seeking for a used copy in the wild of an Iris Murdoch and I haven't come across it. And I feel like as soon as I acquire all of the books that I want by this writer, I'm gonna find a bunch of them because that's just how, that's just how things work. But I'm really excited. I have been, sorry, 
thrift book sticker. I've been really wanting to get into Iris Murdoch and I will be reading this with Nathan from Nathan's Nook. I might be mugging him for his copy and giving him mine because I like his copy a little bit better. But yeah, very excited to read this one. I actually, I have zero idea what this is about. I just know that I want to read Miss Murdoch. So yeah. Milkman by Anna Byrne. So this was one that I heard Nads loves to read and Reba reads speak about very highly and was very intrigued. Kat from Lit With Kat also wanted to read this. So we decided to buddy read it. And then we started reading it and we were like, oh, um, lots of batteries needed in the brain. So we decided to softy enough it at the time and we're gonna return to it this summer. We're also going to read, and I don't have my copy, my copy's at the library, but we're also going to read Trespasses by Claire Kennedy um, and have a little Irish readathon. But I'm very excited. I started this and I actually, I very much enjoyed it. I thought the writing was very tall. Like it's the kind of writing that you, I would read it at the park and then forget where I was. But I feel like in order to get into that rhythm, I needed to effort a little bit and I'm ready to effort now. I just was not a month ago. Super excited to pick this one up. And what is this one about? The first, I'll read you the first sentence because that's what kind of pulled me in. <laughs> The day somebody makes somebody put a gun to my breast and called me a cat and threatened to shoot me was the same day Milkman died. Yeah. Next we have Small Worlds by Caleb Azuma Nelson. Very excited to pick this one up. Also, I just recently followed him on Instagram and he is so precious. I am so, ah, I love him so much. I don't know what this one's about, but I feel like that's not necessary because we all just know that he's a beautiful writer. Next one, Late Americans by Brandon Taylor. So this one I started and loved. <laughs> I loved it so much, but it was also the kind of book where I was just like, I cannot be reading this by myself because I want to scream from the rooftops. I feel like this is such a great book club read and I will be reading this with book club. So I paused it at the 87 page mark and we'll be returning to it with book club hopefully we'll generate some great discussions it was very very interesting so very excited for this one my pile is so messy the next one we will be reading this summer is If an Egyptian Cannot Speak English by Nornaga. This one <laughs> I also had started during the year and didn't have enough brain power don't feel like I need to describe this one because I feel like everyone has already read it but yeah very excited for this one Braiding Sweetgrass by Robin Wall Kimmerer I feel like the theme of my summer TBR is books that I wanted to read during the year, did not have enough brain space to, and am now <laughs> returning to during the summer. But this one I also, I feel like I have tried to read this like three or four times. I tried to read it physically. I tried to read it on audiobook. And I, I think I also try to pick it up like in the winter time, which is, it's not a winter book. I feel like it's a summer book. You read it in the morning and then you go about your day. And then every day you just see the world with more awe. I'm going to read this. I think I'm reading this with Ivana from Ivana in the City. <laughs> we both softy enough it during the year, but it's one that I, I really do. The, the little bit that I did get through, I feel like has sat with me and I've thought about it a lot. So I think it's just, I need to find the right timing for this book and hopefully this summer is it. You see, this is why I get so intimidated. Next one is Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. I have spoken about this book before. I don't know what it's about. I just know that Elizabeth Acevedo is a Dominican writer. Her books are beloved. She writes a lot of YA novels. I read one of them and I was like, this is cool, but not my jam. So I'm very excited to read an adult novel from her. Another book that <laughs> we tried to read and had to stop because this year has been a lot, but YN by Esther Yi. I think everyone kind of knows what this one's about. Fan fiction-y, surrealist -y, parasocial relationships explored in this. Excited, also started reading it, also very much enjoyed it, just, yeah. Okay, this one is one that I have and I'm not sure if I'm gonna read this summer because it kind of gives me like winter vibes, but The Nursery by Svilvia Molnar. This one is about a woman who, I think it, it talks about like postpartum. It's not so much like the questioning of motherhood, it's just like after baby's here and sort of like postpartum depression-y questions. That's, I, I really don't know, so don't hold me accountable for that. But yeah, I, I'm gonna read a few pages and see how I vibe with it, but it definitely might be one that I wait to read when summer has passed, depending on the vibe. Negro Lands by Margot Jefferson. This was one that um, I saw Pleasures of the Text talking about and I was very intrigued. I also don't really, I think this one was also, it was critiquing like bourgeois black life. I, I feel like I remember very little, but that's the bit that I do remember, but I'm excited to pick it up. Okay, next one is Diquette by Jenny Fran Davis. This one I'm gonna read very soon. It's about, I think, queer couples who go away to a getaway. They go to a country home. I feel like this will be a fun little romp for the summer. So I will be reading this, I think, like next week. I'm very excited to pick it up. And last but not least, Paradise Rot by Jenny Haval. This one's special because Monica sent it and she sent it with this cute little 
postcard and I love it. Monica sent me this book and I think I will also be reading it next week. Very excited to get to it. This one, all I know is like roommates and bodily functions and like lack of boundaries around those two humans living together. So also I am reading Bruce, which is another recommendation from Monica. I'm reading that on my Kindle. I'm reading Chain Gang All Star right now. And that one is for book club as well, a different book club. And I'm really enjoying that one. I have to try to finish it by tomorrow and I'm only like 80 pages in, but <laughs> I think those are my summer. That's my summer TBR. In the summer, I try to pick up things that are a little bit lighter that I can read. Like when I'm moving from place to place, I oftentimes like to take my books to the park, on vacations, on little trips. And so I try not to read anything heavy, but I do feel like this year, this year I've read a lot of great books, but I feel like they've also been tinies. And so I want to be a little bit better about reading heavier things. So I have like Kairos and I have Mild Vertigo that I need to pick up in the fall. I think those are great fall books. I think I want to get back to Ali Smith. I might do like Autumn in the autumn and that book i want to return to because of what's the name deborah levy's i read the first book in the trilogy and it was okay for me I, but i think it's mostly my fault but it really reminded me of ali smith and it really made me want to return to her so i'll probably be reading that in the fall have some jimbo lahiri that i want to read in the fall but yeah for the summer i'm excited about this stack so that's it that's our little catch up thank you so much for hanging out i appreciate y'all so much so yeah tell me what you are reading this summer tell me if you will be picking any of these books up or if they had been on your radar already tell me if there's a book i mean the stack is pretty tall but if there's one that you're just like cat you must pick this up let me know and i'll see if i can do some tbr tetris but yeah i think that's it bye